first settlements on Manhattan. Hudson's exploration revealed the value of the River Valley. The first houses on the Manhattan sprang up around a trading post on the southern tip, established by the Dutch. In 1621, New Netherland was put under the newly chartered Dutch West Indian Company, which sent out directors to govern it. In 1623, or 1624, about 30 Walloon families arrived, but all but eight of the men of the company continued up the river to settle Fort Orange, now Albany. Emila Natoka. Welcome to Damn Weird. And in this, I'm going to attempt to organize my collective thoughts on uh, various unusual events and things and people that have occurred and things I've studied. Just a way to organize them here onto YouTube for me. Now we're going to start with some of the easier things simply because we need kind of a foundation for our studies, for something to look at. These are things that maybe shouldn't exist, but do. Emila Natoka is a legendary creature from Central Africa. Its name means killer of elephants. The description of Emila Natoka would be the size of an African forest elephant at about 10 and a half feet by about 13,200 pounds. It would have a brown color, gray, color coat or skin and it supposedly has a single horn with a long tail. Also, it would show similarities with a rhinoceros for its heavy body. The Amula Nitoka possibly needs strong muscular legs. It would be feed on the Malambo plant. Keeping its massive body above ground level supposedly requires four short stump-like legs. It is described as having no frills or ridges along the neck. The animal is alleged to be semi-aquatic and feed on the malambo and other leafy plants. The Amila Notoka is claimed to utter a vocalization described as a snout, rumble, or growl. The structure of the horn is debated among writers on this subject. The debate runs thus. If the horn is ivory, then it would be a tusk and not a horn at all. Some rhinoceros do have tusks, especially the Asiatic one-horned kinds, but these are not known to inhabit Africa. If the horn is made of bone, then the creature is a reptile, as horns can be made of keratin, as are the horns of African rhinos. However, without a specimen to examine, any attempt to classify the Amula Natoka by this method can only be speculative. Amila Natoka seems to resemble Ceratopsian, a type of dinosaur with horns like the Stegosaurus and the famous Triceratops. According to Dr. Roy Mackle, who's searching the Congo with the Mukili Momembe, collected accounts of these Amila Natoka. Cryptozoologist Lauren Coleman, however, believed it is an aquatic rhinoceros rather than a Serapsian. Melanotoka is high, slightly larger than an elephant, which it reportedly hunts. 
A little over 30 years ago, the most famous creatures of cryptozoology were Nessie and the Yeti, a sundry array of sea serpents, and the North American Bigfoot. In 1982, however, following his return to the U.S. in December 1981, at the end of the second and two expeditions to the People's Republic of Congo, formerly known as the French Congo, veteran American cryptozoologist Professor Roy P. Mackle revealed to an astonished media and general public that the elusive swamp monster that he had been searching for in the Congo may conceivably be a living dinosaur. A new cryptozoological star had been born, an elusive long-necked mystery beast bearing an extraordinarily outward resemblance to a seropod, and known to the local Congonese pygmies as the Mokili Mobembe. But this wasn't the only Congolese cryptid that Mackle's team had learned about during their forays there. Less familiar, but definitely no less interesting, was a second major mystery beast claiming by the pygmies to inhabit the country's last Lukwanian swamp lands. A truly extraordinary and exceedingly formidable horned creature known to them as the Amila Natuka, or Killer of Elephants. It's about the size of an elephant itself, but semi-aquatic. The Amanatoka is said to have long, heavy tail, four sturdy limbs, and most notably all a long snout. On first sight, the cryptid sounds like some type of rhinoceros. However, its long, heavy tail differs dramatically from the short, lightweight version possessed by all known rhino species. So too does the horn of rhinoceros are nothing more than masses of compressed hair According to native testimonies, the Amola Natoka is said to resemble an ivory tusk of an elephant. Its ivory is only associated with tusk and teeth, not horns. However, it is probable that it is the pygmy's claims about it is correct, and the Amola Natoka's horn is composed of bone. Its behavior is also found distinctive. Although wholly herbivorous, the Amola Natoka is claimed to be extremely belligerent. So much so that it even sometimes as mighty as an elephant or buffalo enters the lake in which one of these creatures is re residing, the latter will not hesitate to attack the intruder, stabbing and disemboweling its helpless victim with its formidable snout. Following his own investigation of this extraordinary beast, Mackle proposed, albeit cautiously, it may actually be a surviving ceratosaur or horned dinosaur, i.e. belonging to the group of huge herbivore dinosaurs that included such prehistoric st standards as the Triceratops and Steroptosaurus. Many Seropsians possess more than one horn, but at least one famous example, Centrosaurus, formerly the monoclonius bore only a single horn at the end of its nose, and reconstructions of the Serenosis centosaurus certainly recall descriptions of the Eminatoka. However, because the beast horns of the Seropsians were truly horns, composed of bone, not hair, may well be resembled ivory, but like the Eminatoka, and all Seropsian had long, heavy tails, providing yet another match with the Amela Natoka. J.E. Hughes published his book, 18 Years on Lake Bangwelu, in 1913, in which he reported that an animal that fits the description of the Amela Natoka, although not referred to that by the, not by the same name, was slaughtered by Wahushi tribesmen along the shores of the Lapula River, which connects Lake Bangwehu to Lake Maruru. Imnala Toka was mentioned by name for the first time in 1954 in his article in the journal Mammalia. Authored by former Lekwania game inspector, Lucien Blackow, he stated that Amnatokola was larger than a buffalo and dwelled throughout the Likwana. It was also Blanco who first mentioned the fact that the Amanatoka kills elephants, buffaloes, or hippos when disturbed. 
much like Mokila Moembe, allegedly renowned for hating hippos. While both animals are supposedly herbivores, they also supposedly share a fierce sense of territory. And it is for this reason the pygmies are claiming to fear it more than any other dangerous animal. In about 1930, an Emino Natoka was supposedly killed near Dongo. Later evidence was contributed to Dr. Roy P. Mackel, who led two expeditions into the Congo in 1981, gathered details on various other cryptids. 1987 saw the publication of Mackel's book, A Living Dinosaur, whereas he summarized the expedition. A planned season two episode of the New Zealand documentary World Mysteries included an interview with a man who claimed to have encountered a dead Emilia Natoka. He claimed it still possessed the animal's horn, which he removed from the body, and the episode was filmed but never aired. Mysteries of film production, why put so much together but release nothing? It happens usually though, release right problems and all. With the current found footage craze, it could be ideal for that. We can only hope, as well as find out about the guy's horn, test the sample it, or maybe they did, and the results may not have been what they wanted, so they canceled the project. While in process, adding to the very mythology. what I call is an early thing of Maximus drag we're heading to which we're looking at Maximus here and uh, what have you already done towards your look for this evening she's got to go perform at the out and about and we're gonna do some contour makeup and let you see how it looks on her and what we do but she's already done a little bit of work towards it so explain it I've done my binding shirts and that's about it right well, now. You did some costuming work like on your pants? Yeah, I just ironed on a couple patches on my pants. Yeah. No, not a big deal. <laughs> See, she made choices. You gotta make choice on the costume, just not the face. She's got, usually she'd take, but she's got two binding shirts that helps take care of that for now. And you can find them on Amazon actually. Yeah. Pretty cheap. How much? Uh, this. Skin toned one I bought for like 30 bucks. This, the black one, it was like 25. Okay. So, keep moving around. People are like, oh god, you're gonna make me sick, Devin. Yeah, I'll make sure we yeah, got your head yeah. Oh, there's, yeah. Finally, that's a nice solid shot. So, <laughs> what we're gonna do is we're gonna be laying down. Hair, we got spirit gum. And a bowl full of hair. A bowl full of hair. Oh, okay, there she's, she got blurry there for a second. Look at some stuff we found on YouTube also for a new way of doing it. We used to do the, well, first of all, hello, there. So now you have a face to the square. Devin, voice. get out of my video. Get out of my view, you're hugging the light. He's not sharing. Max, don't share. No, I don't. Okay. So, what do you want done on the forehead here? Nothing right now. Nothing? No. Okay. I'll do that towards the end. Okay. So, what's your first, do you want to do the eyebrow or the, um? Just draw out the stems, the, uh, okay. the pattern that you're going to do. 
And we're doing this along the same line that you would do for the uh, contour line. for the jawline. Now, you could usually get a stencil, but we're experimenting here with a different look. In the bathroom out here, yeah. there is a shadow palette used to black. We are using this pencil, but it, 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 and it was usually whenever less I left of it than we thought. Draw it on. Uh, there's brushes in the bathroom as well. In there? Yeah. Usually whenever I draw, draw it on, I just use like a matte black or a matte dark brown or, okay. well, it, good to be or anything that's like, anything that's not glittery or shimmery or... Yeah, you don't want to go with, gl with glitter? No. Hold that in your nose. Oh! It didn't want to! Now your marriage going to be crooked. It's your punishment. I usually draw this on the... Or experimenting and playing and want to film and look at it. But with my jawline, I'm going to go ahead and use the matte black and shade it in. You know, just shut. Like okay, see where it's dark on the other side. Sounds already starting to let down, so you want to really blend it down. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. I'm trying something new because I usually do like the. Well, what everybody calls the douchebag pencil beard. We, got, we tried one time actually laying the hair like a, in a movie. Yeah. And, uh, well, do them like that. I guess you look too much like a. We're man. being stared at by Kitty Kitty! You feel that? I am. Okay. Now, how'd you want to go with that soul patch? I was thinking, Triangular? For the line, or just the line? Um, probably just triangular. Okay. Chin on more? Or like, all the way from here? No, like the, uh... Like right below the lip, like here? Yeah, like the top of the triangle. Like right there? Yeah. Okay. So there. How wide? Yeah. Okay. Now, after we do the hair, well, that's what I'll do is I'll shade a little bit below it, and then you can add more shading afterwards, right? If you want, or you want me to do all the? Just do a little. Yeah, if you want, you can do it all. I don't care. Yes, Kitty, you look. You are so Stand beautiful. Yes. Raise yourself in. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's with that fake ass. <laughs> yeah. No. Sponge. Do we have any in there? Uh, yeah, there is one sponge in the bathroom. That one? Yes, it is a little rectangle. Yeah, pretty much. With uh, once you say keep the uh, like facial hair, if you just try it on to to your natural to your the hair color you have, unless it's easier. Yeah, you have less uh, people complaining about it. It's like people complain. I mean, why do anything that's going to disrupt from your, the fantasy? Exactly. Side. Yes. Okay. Got like a five o'clock shadow where I shave. Okay. Then we get a bit. Then we have the whole reason we're doing this two person this time. Try out this new hair thing. We've seen who's one you looked at online? Spiky Van Dyke. I looked at a couple other ones. I don't remember their names, but. They actually, they actually did pretty good. Just remember you gotta let that dry a little bit to where it's tacky. Oh, should put it back. What? I like it. Now I wouldn't recommend laying 
like actual facial hair, but new kings, unless you have somebody doing it for you. Once we do this the first time, she'll have absolutely no problem reproducing it herself. Although it's kind of nice to be pampered. Yes, it is. I don't. I don't have to worry about. Oh, did I get it on right? You know, or. And if it doesn't work, she has someone to yell at instead of herself. And I'm a terrible That's again. Yeah. Yeah, break up this hair. You gotta keep it. It gets tangled sometimes sitting there. My little massage. <laughs> Facial massage! And we'll trim it afterwards. So it looks well like men's hair does when they first work with it. It doesn't always look that straight and trim. So you gotta first, to get it realistic, make it look messy. Look at the limits. You don't wanna make more work than the after or waste I hair. usually do the uh, eyebrow floss. Okay. We'll take a little look. Go ahead. You get it and go off over there. You suck it a little bit. Special thing. Okay. So what I'm using for my eyebrows is. Oh. Okay, there you go. And then I usually like to go with like a darker brown. I'm coming down to it. Okay. So just go like that. And then run it through. Just like that. And just manage up them eyebrows being thick and unruly as men do. Not nice and taken care of like women do. And for like the nose. A little arching. A little. The ones. The right hand one needs a little thickening on the top of the arch. Yeah, right there. there. That way it matches. And then for the nose contour, because women's noses are smaller than men's. Yeah, she had shadow. So I'll just take it, bring it down. Just like that. Same with the other side. If it doesn't match up even, don't worry about it. Kind of blends down the co contouring, doesn't it? And get your little, uh, I guess, angel kiss or whatever it's called. Oh. Whisper uh, here. Yeah. Whisper them. And, and also you should get the, uh, the creases on the side by the nose a little bit. Just a little. Right here. Yeah. And bring this out just a tad. You gonna blend it without the sponge? Yeah, with my finger. Okay, so I say I forgot to put I left it in there. And darken underneath the eyes because, well, men have more sunken in eyes. Color on the bottom for men, on the top for women. Even add lightening the top if you needed to get rid of the uh, shading look on it. Usually I use a sponge, but not today, so. I'll just take my finger. Needle, go grab it, it's out there. Woo! There you go. Serves better the purpose of drag work. So it looks good. 
without looking at the offset. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Are you feeling the character? Oh yeah. Helps to your identity when you like to feel. You feel like the person different. You feel like you should be driving a truck. I'll okay. tell you what, it's different than Raven. Raven looked like he's supposed to fix my computer. Raven was a nerd. <laughs> Raven looked like he was gonna be one of the nerd squad to come fix my computer, man. He put on glasses. I come like, in as Morgan and I leave as Maximus. It'll be a great show. See you guys next time. And we'll see the development of Maximum Drag as we go. I was home sleeping. Okay, just checking on you. <laughs> just doing a sound check. Hello. Hi. Okay. <laughs> no. Yeah, I usually do. Do you want to talk? You talk? You talk? Too bad. No talk. Neck tickles. Neck tickles. Ah. Ah.